Hey, welcome back. Hey, we're going to go ahead and launch into our last uh, topic of the year. We're going to kind of uh, do a fairly simple concept. Um, Find the area of triangles, actually. Uh, one half base times height, as you've always done that. But we're going to kind of do that through the lens of uh, some trigonometry because one of the problems when you say one half base times height, that's predicated on the idea that the base and the height have to be they have to be perpendicular. The height, I mean, when you go to the doctor's office, they always say stand up straight. They're saying be perpendicular to the floor. And so, you know, you don't always have that perpendicular value. And so we can sometimes split the triangle up and make it perpendicular, but we're gonna find out that we're using some trigonometry, we don't have to. So I'm actually gonna do area in two parts. We're gonna do one part in the first video and one part in the second video, just to keep it a little bit shorter. So let's go ahead and develop that concept and uh, let's kind of see how this plays out. So here we go. So conceptually, what happens is, just like what we have been doing over the past uh, little bit, let's call this side A, which of course would mean that this length right over here would be A. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and call this, uh, this, this side right down, this angle C, and I'm gonna call this guy C, and, and therefore this is B. I know I flipped it around, but it really doesn't matter. We could rotate the figure. Now, of course, what a lot of you would like to do is drop in a little bit of an altitude right here. We're gonna call that H. And um, so the area of this triangle would be one half the base, times the height, which in this case would just be one half B times H, which is fine. But of course, what I would really like to do is I would like to be able to avoid doing this thing with this H because I don't have that H. But as it turns out, what I could say is that the sine of angle A right here, which often I will refer to as alpha, and I'll actually change that up in a minute, but the sine of A is H over C, which means the product of C, because if we cross multiply, C times the sine of A will give me, in fact, H. So if we were to take this piece right here and substitute this in for H right here, we have a nice, simple little formula that the area of the triangle is one half the base, but instead of putting the height there, I'm going to put C sine. Oops, kind of messed that up. One half the base times C sine angle A, which I'm going to go ahead and change that up and call it alpha. So the area is one half B C sine alpha. So it's one half the product of B times C times the sine of that angle right here in the middle of that which is pretty cool. So notice this is a little bit of a bummer because I just told you to use the law of sines for, SA, um, for ASA and AAS, and for side angle side triangles, we generally use the law of cosines, but to find the area, notice that a sine becomes useful. But what if I didn't have B and C? What if I didn't have these two sides? Well, we can substitute it, we can rotate, we can rename. So we actually have a total of three area formulas, but they're all predicated on having things in a side angle side form. So the area of the triangle could be one half A, B, sine of the angle C. We could have one half A, C times the sine of angle B or we could have one half B C times the sine of the angle A. And you'll see people use Greek letters instead for those, but that kind of lays it out. But again, I'm beating on this, you have to have a side angle side. Meaning, so if this was my story and somebody said, hey, I've got a seven here, I've got a 12 here, and let's say this is 52 degrees, Notice it's side angle side. So the area of this triangle, I do not have to go find the height of this thing. I just say, fine, it's one half the product of the two sides that I do know times the sine of the angle in the middle, which is super fast, super easy to do. Pop that sucker into your calculator and you've got 33.096 units squared. 
Now that does beg the question that what happens if you don't have a side angle side? What if somebody was mean to you and they gave you an ASA trauma, for example? So what if instead we knew that this angle down here was 45 degrees, this angle over here was 73 degrees, and we had this side down here say 13? Well, I don't have side angle side, do I? Uh, well, I'm just gonna go ahead and throw a letter right here. I'm gonna call this thing um, X. I know that if I have 180 in a triangle, I know that this missing angle up at the top is 62 degrees. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say that the sine of 62, now um, let me highlight these things. These were the given pieces of information. Notice this is ASA. But if I did the sine of 62 over 13 equals the sine of 73 over X, remember that was just the law of sines that we learned. If we cross multiply, Remember, sine of 62 is a number. 13 times the sine of 73 is just a number. So if we took this and this and divided them, we could find out what x is. So let's see, according to my calculator, 13 sines of 73 divided by the sine of 62 looks like 14.08. Uh, 14.080. Well, if you look, if I were to call this 14.080, this is now perfectly a side angle side story. And so the area of my triangle is one half the product of the two sides times the sine of the angle in the middle. So I could just grab that thing, let's multiply it by 13, multiply it by the sine of 45, and last, I have not forgotten to divide by that two, and the area of that triangle is 64.714 units squared, and I never once had to actually go about actually finding what this height is. Uh, it wouldn't have been very hard, but I could have done that. Now, there's a third, uh, there's a secondary way. So this is the way that I wanted to teach you today how to find the area of a triangle is just using a side angle side. But there's another way to do this from side, side, side. And you're gonna have to indulge me here just a little bit because I am unapologetically a geek and I just get excited about math and uh, I really, really like it. Um, and so I did a little bit of looking to find some stuff for you that I actually usually share anyway. But um, sadly enough, there's somebody who is really famous in mathematical history that is known for finding the area of the triangle. And I, and I say sadly because the guy did some amazing stuff. So he does come from a different culture than us. Um, you can tell this guy right here, hopefully this is showing up well. But this is a guy named Hero or Huron of Alexandria. Now, as it turns out, you may have heard of um, the, live, uh, the, the wonders of the ancient world, um, like the Hanging Towers of Babylon or Gardens of Babylon. Well, this guy was one of Alexandria. He was one of the main librarians in Alexandria. And some people call him Hero, others call them Huron, but this guy is amazing. He actually made the first um, vending machine. He actually was the first one back in 60 to 70 AD to make a steam engine. This is amazing. He actually made a functional steam engine, a puppet theater, a fire engine. Um, he also is not listed in here. He made a perpetual clock that you put water in it and it would run for years by feeding itself. The guy was a stinking genius. In fact, when the library of Alexandria burned to the ground, we lost all of that stuff. And he, we found out much later through archeological digs, I guess is how they figured it out. But literally he had things that society took a thousand years to get back that he had figured out that he had in his stuff. And most people don't know that about him. Most people know something different, which is awesome, but man, a little bit of a letdown considering what he did. But Huron figured out the following, is that if you have a side, side, side triangle, and for fun, let's just call this A, B, and C, 
he figured out that we're going to call a plus b plus c divided by 2 s. And, and um, I wish they didn't call it s. I, I try to avoid the letter s in my work um, because it can look like a 5. But he called it s for the semi-perimeter. And um, what, what Heron figured out, and there is a proof, it's actually in your textbook, you can see that. But he found out, this is crazy, that the area of a triangle, if you know all three sides, is the square root of that semi-perimeter S times the difference between that semi-perimeter and side A, the semi-perimeter and B, and the semi-perimeter and C. That is a crazy stinking formula. So meaning if we had a simple problem, let's say we had a, a four, a seven, and a nine, a simple side, side, side triangle, and somebody says, hey, can you go get the area of that thing? Well, the first thing we would need to do is find its semi-perimeter. And it turns out four plus seven plus nine is 20, divided by two is 10. So the semi-perimeter is 10. So we start off with the semi-perimeter 10. Then we do the semi-perimeter minus four, the semi-perimeter minus seven, and the semi-perimeter minus nine. So it turns out what we have is now the square root of 10 times three times six, which I'm gonna go ahead and do, well, this may seem a little bit strange to you, but I'm gonna to try to see if I can figure out how to kind of break this thing down a little bit. And I noticed that a 10 is a two and a five, six is a two and a three, and then I have another three. Um, some of you had Mr. Wheeler, some of you didn't, but this is a cool way to simplify roots. Others of you would have said root 180 and, and tried to solve that, but if you break it down and you just look like you're playing Go Fish and you look for pairs, I have a pair of twos and a pair of threes, so I have six, two times three, roots of five, or somebody else might have said, no, 180 is five times 36, which gets that number back. But what's amazing about that is without using trig and the estimations that, are, that come from using trig, we got an absolutely perfect answer with infinite precision. Thanks, Heron of Alexandria, for a really amazing way to solve that problem very, very quickly without the need of a calculator. I wish you were a little bit more well known for some of your more substantial um, things that you did in mathematics, but hey, I guess uh, at least you're known for something, so. All right, that's it. A little bit of stuff about how to find the area of triangles using trig. Have a great one. Bye-bye.